The brutal crackdown on pro-democracy protesters is continuing in the Gulf state of Bahrain. Last month, the tiny island Gulf nation that hosts the U.S. Navy's Fifth Fleet imposed martial law in an attempt to crush the uprising there. According to Human Rights Watch, more than two dozen Bahraini security personnel stormed prominent defense lawyer Mohammed Tajer's home on Friday night and detained him. Tajer had defended opposition figures and rights activists arrested during recent protests. Hundreds of demonstrators, political figures, human rights activists and Shiite professionals have been detained in security sweeps since the Bahraini authorities crushed the pro-democracy movement in mid-March. Bahrain imposed martial law on the country March 15th. The United States has continued to back the regime despite repeated appeals from protesters. Last Tuesday, we spoke to Zineb Al Khawaja, daughter of the detained human rights activist Abdul Hadi Al Khawaja. My message to Obama is basically that uh, he has to to choose. He has to choose if his if his administration is really um, with human rights, democracy, and freedom as he claims, and with change towards democracy, or is he um, more concerned about supporting his uh, his friends who are dictators in the Middle East. Zineb's father, husband and brother-in-law were detained last Saturday following a late-night raid on their house. Zineb started a hunger strike in protest. Today is the eighth day of her fast, which she vows to continue till her family members are released. She was hospitalized briefly yesterday. She's very weak. She's joining us on the phone from Bahrain, along with her sister, Batul. In the studio, we're joined by Faraz Saneh, Human Rights Watch Bahrain and Iran researcher who just returned after six weeks in Bahrain. Zineb, let's go to you first. Um, how are you feeling? This is the eighth day of your strike. You also have a one-year-old baby. Um, I'm feeling uh, very weak. Uh, I have a very hard time uh, even sitting up. I spend most of my day lying down. Um, but on the most part, uh, I still have faith that I will soon see my family members who are detained. We spoke to you last week when you described the, your father being dragged out of your house, the blood on the stairs when you were forced back into the house as you were protesting his being taken. Um, have you gotten any word from him? We haven't gotten any word whatsoever, not at all. We haven't gotten any response, uh, no phone calls. Um, we don't even know uh, where, where they're being held. How long are you willing to be on this strike if you are already very weak after eight days? Um, as I said uh, from the beginning that I will continue the strike until the release of my father, my uncle, my husband and my brother-in-law. Have you been in contact with any other government leaders, and Bahraini government leaders, the U.S., the Fifth Naval Fleet is there, anyone? Nobody at all. Um, as always, uh, the Bahraini government and the U.S. administration are proving to us once again that they do not care about uh, the Bahraini people and what we're going through, and all they care about is what they think is their own interest. When they were dragging your father out of the house, did they say why they were taking him? They did not give any reasons at all. They did not have any arrest warrants. Um, all, all they were doing was cursing and beating and threatening my father and saying they were going to kill him. Was he responding to them? Was he speaking? The only thing my father said from the moment they, he saw them and they started beating him until they took him away unconscious was that he couldn't breathe. He never said one other word and he never raised his hand. Your father was head of the Human Rights Association of Bahrain? My father was head of the Bahrain Center for Human Rights, and uh, the past two years he's been working with uh, frontline defenders based uh, in Ireland. 
At the same time that they took your father, they took your husband as well? Yeah, my husband and my brother-in-law as well. Why did they take your husband? They took them because uh, they were in the same place as my father. They did not know who they were. They, as they beat them, they asked them for their identification and their names. But uh, beforehand, they did not know who they were. And afterwards, they decided to take them as well. And your uncle was taken before that? My uncle was taken about three weeks before the arrest of my father and husband and brother-in-law. Was he also a human rights activist? Um, maybe not a human rights activist. He was just, uh, he was a, um, he would speak up his mind and he would uh, write messages to people he knew and, and ask them to stand up for justice and against what the regime was doing in Bahrain. Now, your aunt has been called, is that right, to bring clothes for your uncle, so at least there's some thought that he is still alive. Yes, uh, all they, all they uh, asked it was for some clothes, but we never, she was not allowed to speak to him and she was not allowed to see him and and that's that's also very worrying because uh, sometimes they would let uh, detainees talk to their family members and he wasn't even allowed to to talk to his wife and when she asked to see him they, they did not let her see see him so um on on the one hand we we're happy that uh, that uh, this might mean that uh, he's alive, but on the other hand, how badly tortured is he that we don't want anyone to even lay eyes on him or speak to him on the phone? Batul, your fiance was also taken um, with Zeneb's husband and uh, with your father. Um, have you heard from him at all? I think we just lost Batul. Zeneb, are you still there? Uh, we just lost both of them. Um, uh, Zeneb, are you still there? I'm Batul. I'm here. This is Batul? Yes. Batul, your fiancé was also taken that night along with your father and Zeneb's husband? Yes, he was. Can, was he a human rights activist? No, actually, he's still a student in university. He's an engineering student. And why is, what is your sense of why he was taken? And have you heard anything from him since? Well, from what I saw, the only reason he was taken was that he was unfortunate enough to be uh, in the building when they came for my father. And uh, we didn't get any news from him. Her, his uh, father even went to police stations to ask about him. And the only response he would get was that uh, they didn't have him and they didn't know where he was. So it's been eight days now and we have no clue where he is or anything about him. Are you concerned about Zeneb, your sister's health, in this eighth day of a hunger strike? Yes, definitely, because uh, actually I just graduated nursing school, so I've been monitoring her blood pressure and her blood sugar. And uh, they're both borderline, and her pulse is usually very weak, and uh, she ha also has a rapid heartbeat. So, of course, I'm, I'm worried about her, but at the same time, uh, I know why she's doing this, and I respect her for it. You are 21, your sister Zeneb, she is 26? 27, yes. 27. Um, yes. Has this gotten any attention in Bahrain? Uh, yeah, definitely. From the people, yes. Because they, here everyone is very close-knit, so we've uh, gotten a lot of calls from people showing their support. But uh, when it comes to the government, we have gotten no response whatsoever, nothing. Mm.